Hi all, this is M. Divya, Assistant Professor from the Department of Biomedical Engineering in Erode Sengundar Engineering College, Autonomous Perundurai. So in this session, I am going to handle the topic Skeletal System. So Skeletal System is the major important system in our human body because without the skeletal system, our body doesn't get a proper shape and structure. So let's move on to the session. So a bone is an organ that is made up of several different kind of tissues are working together. That is bone tissue, cartilage, dense connective tissue, epithelium, adipose tissue and nervous tissue. So the entire framework of bones and their joints constitute the skeletal system. So the, the study of bone structure and treatment of bone disorders is usually referred as osteology. Next one is functions of skeletal system. So skeletal system perform different kind of functions in our body. That is first one is support and protection of soft tissues and vital organs. Movement to give Attachment to the muscles, it provides different kind of movements. Production, red blood cells are produced in the bone marrow of bones. Storage, it stores several minerals, especially calcium and phosphorus, which contribute to the strength of bone. Yellow bone marrow stores the triglycerides as energy stores. So these are the functions of skeletal system. Next thing is types of bones. According to their shapes, bones are divided into different kind of types. First one is long bones. It contain a shaft and two extremities. So the functions of long bone is to support the weight of the body and facilitate the movement. Example femur. It is the longest bone in the body and it is located in the lower extremity. Then short bones, they are about as long as they are wide. It is located in the wrist and ankle joints. The short bones provide stability and some movement. Next one is irregular bones. It is vary in shape and structure. They often have a fairly complex shape which helps to protect the internal organs. For example, the vertebrae, irregular bones of vertebral column and protect the spinal cord. Next one is sesamoid bones. They are bones that are embedded in tendons. These small round bones are commonly found in the tendons of hands, knees and feet. The sesamoid bone functions to protect tendons from stress and wear. Example, patella that is commonly referred as the kneecap. So, the uh, most of the bones are usually covered with some kind of cartilage to avoid the stress and wears. Next one is flat bones. They contain two layers of compact bone with the spongy substances in between. The function of flat bone is to protect the internal organs such as brain, heart and pelvic organs. Example, skull and the thoracic cage. So this is the anatomical structure of different type of bones that is flat bone, irregular bone, long bone, short bone and sesamoid bone. Next we move on to the anatomy of the bone. So generally the bone is divided into two regions that is epiphysis and diaphysis. So the top portion of the bone is usually referred as proximal side and end point is referred as distal side. So here we have from the picture you can see proximal epiphysis and distal epiphysis. In between we have diaphysis. So epiphysis and diaphysis usually connected in a portion called metaphysis. So in epiphysis region only we have red bone marrow. From the red bone marrow only the RBC cells are usually developed. So in diaphysis we have medullary cavity. 
so in that medullary cavity only the yellow bone marrow present which is constituted for energy storage then the top and bottom portion that is the proximal and distal portions are covered with articular cartilage to avoid the friction so your long bone has two parts that is diaphysis and epiphysis the diaphysis is the tubular shaft that runs between the proximal and distal end of the bone the hollow region in the diaphysis is called the medullary cavity which is filled with yellow bone marrow then the walls of diaphysis are usually composed of dense and hard compact bone then the wider section at the end of the bone is called epiphysis which is usually filled with the spongy bone so here only the red bone marrow is usually present so the red bone marrow is fills the spaces in the spongy bone each epiphysis meet the diaphysis at the point called metaphysis then the medullary cavity has a delicate membranous lining called endosternum then the outer surface of the bone is covered with a fibrous membrane called peristium then the epiphysis are usually covered with the articular cartilage a thin layer of cartilage that is mainly present for the for to avoid the friction over the bones next what are the different kind of bone cells present in our body so we all know that from the cells only the every each and every organ is developed so for to develop the bone also we need some kind of cells so different kind of cells are constituted for the formation of bone first one is osteogenic cells so it is developed into osteoblast from the osteoblast only the bone formation is getting to be initiated so next thing is osteocytes it's maintain the mineral concentrations of the bone then osteoclots it's it's is a its major function is bone reabsorption so because it, uh, the osteoclast location is bone surfaces and it, at the site of old insured and un needed bones so so major function of osteoclast is to the bone reabsorption so these are the major um, bone cells present in our body next under the microscope examinations the bone is viewed as a different kind of layers that is first thing is harvention canal which lies at this center it contains blood vessels nerves and lymphatics next thing is lamellae which are plates of bones arranged concentrically around the harvenson canal lacunae the space between the lamellae and they contain bone cells then next thing is canicula they are final channels and radiate between the lacunae and harvenson canal so all these structure are combined together and form and system called harvenson system so this is the harvenson system generally the bone is viewed as a different kind of layers next thing is formation of bone generally the formation of bone is called as ossification the bones of skeletons are developed in two ways some bones are developed in seeds of fibrous tissue it is referred as intramembranous ossification other bones are developed in bars of cartilage it is usually referred as intracartilaginous ossification so in both the cases the bone cell are called osteoblast that invade the area of ossification here calcium salts are developed to give the necessary hardness so this process of bone development occurs before birth so after the birth the bone grows from the certain centers in it so the center in the shaft called diaphysis and end called epiphysis already we know in general structure of bone so the top and bottom portions are referred as epiphysis and central region is referred as diaphysis so the layer of cartilage between the epiphysis and diaphysis are usually called 
epiphyseal cartilage this is gradually replaced by bone and replacement occurs till the epiphysis and diaphysis you need to form a single bone structure so after this growth the bone formation is getting to be stopped so this is the formation of bone next we move on to the division of skeletal system so all of you you know that we have 206 bones in our body so these bones are classified as bones of the skull trunk upper limb and lower limb so the bones of skull covers the region like cranium face and the lower jaw bones of a trunk cover the ribs sternum vertebral column so the next bones of upper limb covers the region like scapula humerus radius and ulna then the bones of lower limb covers the pelvic girdle femur tibia and fibula and also the metatarsal bones so these are the general classification of bones next the skeletal system is usually divided into two portions that is axial skeletal system and appendicular skeletal system so axial skeletal system it is formed by bones of skull and trunk and in it is indicated by blue color in the right side of the picture next thing is appendicular skeletal system so it is formed by upper and lower limbs so it is indicated by pink color in the left side of the image next one is axial skeletal system so it consists of total of 80 bones they are divided divided as skull skull is subdivided into two portions that is cranium 8 and face 14 ossicles of middle ear has six bones hyoid bones of throat has one vertebral column 26 thoracic cage otherwise rib cage it is divided into two that is sternum 1 and ribs 24 so totally 80 bones are present in the axial skeletal system so functions of axial skeletal system the it is provide support and protection for the brain spinal cord and the organs of with well body cavity so it provides a surface for the attachment of muscles that move head neck and trunk and performs respiratory movements and it also stabilizes the parts of appendicular skeletal system so these are the functions of axial skeletal system so first one is skull so skull usually has 22 bones that is bony framework of the head it is uh, usually grouped into two categories already we know cranium and face so cranial we have eight bones so it from the cranial cavity which encloses and protects the brain so their counting are one frontal bone it forms forehead and the root of the orbit two parietal bone it forms the roofs and sides of the skull two temporal bones it forms lower part of the sides of the skull one occipital bone it is at the back and lower part of the cranial cavity one sphenoid bone it lies at the base of the skull one ethmoid bone it is situated at the roof of the nose and in between in between the orbits so these are the classification of cranial bones totally eight bones in cranium so this is the uh, structure of eight cranial bones that is we, uh, in cranial bones we have uh, ethmoid bone sphenoid frontal parietal temporal and occipital totally we have eight bones from both right and left side next thing is facial bones totally we have 14 bones in facial it forms the face two nasal bones it form the nasal bridge two maxilla it forms the upper jaw two zygomatic bones it forms the floor of the orbit mandible 
it form the lower jaw and only movable bone of skull then two lacrimal bones it form the interior orbit two palatine bones it form the root of the mouth cavity and heart valve two inferior nasal cockae they are the present in the interior of nasal cavity then vomer it form the lower part of the nasal septum so these 14 bones constitute for the facial bones and it form the face this is the general structure of facial bones so already we if we seen in like cranium this is also in this also mostly we have two count because it covers the both right and left portion so totally we have 14 facial bones next we see some special features of skull so skull contain other components like nasal septum it divides the skull into right and left portions then orbits seven bones of skull join to form each orbit so three cranial and four facial bones then sutures and immovable joints in adults that holds most skull bones together then paranasal sinuses these are the cavities or chambers present in the skull then fontanelles at birth the skull bones of the child are not completely ossified so it is not developed completely the spaces between the bones are filled with some membrane called fontanelles so fontanelles are the membrane that is uh, present before the birth so these are the special features of the skull next ossicles of middle ear uh, so usually uh, these uh, ossicles are present in our ear that is mainly in in middle part of the ear so these are the tiny bones are present in the middle ear namely malus incus and staples so already you know that the longest bone in our body is femur here we have the shortest bone also so in malus staph incus the staph is the shortest bone in our human body next one is hyoid bone so hyoid bone is a u shaped bone that is present in the neck region so it is usually located in the anterior neck between the mandible and the larynx so it major function is to support the lung next one is vertebral column so in vertebral column we have totally of 26 bones so it is also known as spine backbone or spinal column so it, its major function is to enclosing and protecting the spinal cord and it supports the head so it serves as a point of attachment for the ribs pelvic girdle and muscles of back and upper limb so it contain 26 vertebra so generally it is divided into five regions so seven cervical bones they are from the neck region 12 thoracic they form the back of thorax five lumbar they form the lumbar region one sacral and one coccus so this is the general structure of vertebral column already we know cervical have seven thoracic have 12 lumbar have five sacrum five and coccus four uh, here in sacrum and coccus five bones and four bones are like fused together and in anatomical structure it appear as single bone but usually here for example in sacrum we have five bones that five bones are fused together and appear as a single one next one is thoracic cage it is also referred as chest region so it is uh, here already we know that it is divided into sternum and rib sternum we have one bone it is a flat bone which is divided into three parts that is manubrium body and xiphoid bone so manubrium it is the upper part of upper part which is a triangular in shape 
body the second rib is attached at the junction between the manubrium and the body curve sternal angle then xiphoid bone it is the lowest portion of sternum it is attached to the diaphragm so this is the uh, three major parts of sternum then ribs we have 24 bones they arranged in the 12 pairs on the back side all of them are attached to the vertebra depending on their attachment in the front region it is classified into three region that is two ribs that is it is referred as upper ribs numbered from 1 to 7 false ribs they are also called as lower ribs from 8 to 10 then the third one thing is floating ribs that is lowest ribs 11 and 12 usually the floating ribs are not attached it is in the usually in a floating condition here we have the picture of thoracic cage so first we have true ribs from 1 to 7 next we have false ribs 8 to 10 then lower end we have floating ribs it is that doesn't get attached to the vertebra at the back next we move on to the appendicular skeleton so till now we discuss about the axial skeleton so now we move on to the appendicular skeleton appendicular skeleton it is formed by the upper and lower limb portions so like axial skeletal system in appendicular skeletal system we have 126 bones uh, the counting are uh, divided based on the different portions in our body so first one is pectoral grid here we have four count of bones that is clavicular two and scapula two pelvic grid we have two bones that is hip pelvic or coxal bone that is in two in number upper limbs we have 60 that is right and left combined together we have 60 bones that is humerus two ulna two radius two carpal 16 metacarpal 10 phalanges 28 in lower limbs also we have 60 both right leg and left leg that is femur 2 patella 2 fibula 2 tibia 2 tarsal 14 metatarsal 10 and phalanges 20 so totally we have 126 bones in appendicular skeletal system first one is pectoral grid or shoulder grid it provide the point of attachment to the upper limb of the axial skeleton it consist of clavicle 2 in the anterior and scapula 2 in the posterior just you see the picture the shape of the clavicle is s shaped and it uh, uh, positions the arms on the body and placed horizontally the scapula are the flat triangular bones that are located at the back of the pectoral grid so in first picture we show the clavicle bone and second picture you can see the scapula bone next one is upper limbs we have 60 uh, in right portion you have 30 and left region you have 30 so totally you have 60 bones it is divided into three, uh, three regions that is arm portion forearm portion and wrist and hand portion so in arm region we have humerus that is two in number forearm we have radius and ulna that is four in number then wrist and hand region is divided into three carpal metacarpal and phalanges here we have totally of 54 bones first one is humerus it is longest bone in our human body uh, it runs from shoulder to elbow it is the longest bone of upper limb so it contain two extremities and a shaft region so it connects the scapula and two bones of the lower arm radius and ulna so ulna it is two in number it is the innermost bone of the forearm it contains two extremities and a shaft already you know that most of the long bones are contain uh, extremities and a shaft it stretches from the elbow to the smallest finger it is found on the medial side of the forearm so it usually runs parallel to the radius 
and the other long bone in the forearm next is radius it is also 2 in number it extend from the lateral side of the elbow to the thumb side of the wrist and it runs parallel to the ulna it contains two extremities and a shaft several muscles of the arm and forearm have origins and insertions on the radius to provide motions to the upper limb next thing is wrist and hand we have 54 bones so wrist or corpel so the corpel bones are eight small bones that makes the upper wrist that connects the hand to the forearm so they are arranged in two rows that is proximal row and distal row so in the right side of the picture you can see the different colors uh, that are referred as the corpel bones that here we have eight corpel bones that are arranged in the two row that is proximal row and distal row next one is palm so palm we have metacarpal bones they are made up of metacarpal bones uh, they are long bones which contain head shaft and the base portion so in the right side uh, picture you can see the red colored image that are referred as the metacarpal bones the base articulate with the distal row of carpal bones the head articulate with the proximal row of phalanges bone next one is fingers or otherwise phalangeal bones so they are made up of phalangeal they are long bones the thumb has two phalanges then the other pictures as three phalanges bones they are usually divided into three portions proximal intermediate and distal phalanges so in picture you can get a clear idea in uh, bottom of the picture you can see the corpel then metacarpal then phalanges are usually divided into three proximal intermediate and distal and note the major thing that the thumb finger has two phalanges bone only so this is the upper limb general structure so here we have humerus radius and ulna portions and corpel metacarpal and phalanges bones so totally in upper limb we have 60 bones next one is pelvic girdle or hip girdle it is the connection between the trunk and the lower extremities it has three parts ilium pubis and ischium so ilium is the upper and flat part pubis is the front portion then ischium is the solid broad portion at the lower side so all these bones are united together and form a large cup shaped cavity on the outer surface called acetabulum so the head of the femur fit into the acetabulum and forms the major important thing that is hip joint so this is these are about the pelvic girdle next we move on to the lower limbs um so here also we have totally of 60 bones that is right side 30 and left side 30 so first bone in the lower limb is femur that is 2 in number it is also called as thigh bone it is the longest and strongest bone of skeletal system so it also contain two extremities and a shaft next we have patella that is also two in number it is a sesamoid bone that is developed in the tendons of quadriceps femoris muscle then we have tibia two in number it is the innermost bone of the leg it is a long bone containing two extremities and a shaft next one is fibula it is also two in number it is the lateral or out the most bone of the leg it is the long and slender bone so it also contain two extremities and a shaft next thing is foot we have totally of 52 bones it is divided into three region hind foot two of the seven tarsal bones mid foot rest of the tarsal bones four foot metatarsal and phalanges so then tarsal bones they include calcinum talus navicular cubit and three cuneiform bones 
metatarsal bones they are arranged uh, based on the five tubes all of them are long bones then phalanges we have first two have two phalanges bones rest have three phalanges bones all of them are long bones like previously we see in um, upper uh, limb region like that here also we have corpal metatarsal and phalanges region so this is the um general structure of lower limb here we have femur it is the longest bone in our human body patella fibula and tibia tarsal metatarsal and phalanges bone so so this is the here i conclude that the skeletal system is the major important system in our human body generally it is divided into two regions that is axial skeletal system and appendicular skeletal system so in axial skeletal system we have 80 bones and appendicular skeletal system we have 126 bone so totally we have 206 in our bo bones in our human body thank you for watching this video